A house fully engulfed in flames in El Cajon as firefighters do battle not only against that massive fire, but also the extreme heat and windy conditions today. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Steve Price in tonight for Carlo. That fire broke out around 245 in the 1600 block of Via Elisa, and that was not the only fire today. Yeah, there were at least four others, including one that broke out late this morning north of Mission Gorge Road in Santee and another in the 3400 block of Silverleaf Lane in Deer Springs. News 8's Heather Hope is live in El Cajon tonight with the latest. Heather? Fire crews still on the scene as smoke continues to emanate from the home out here. You can see the firefighters right in front of the house as the deep smoke continues to shoot forth. They do have red tape outside at the homeowner. Thankfully was not inside at the time. Unfortunately, he says his two dogs were and that his two dogs did die in the fire. Still crews on scene doing what they can as they've been battling the heat. And here's what we heard from a frightened neighbor who called 911 today. Right when I saw the flames, I called 911. I didn't, I didn't wait a couple seconds at all. I was just freaking out, man. I feel bad. It's like a person's property, you know. I didn't want that spread. I didn't want anyone being there, no one getting hurt. I, I was just speechless, honestly. I didn't want anything happening to anyone else. This is, like my, this is where I live, so I didn't want that to spread around. It could ruin everyone's houses. Yes, just after 240 firefighters worked to put out this residential fire in the 1600 block of Via Lisa and El Cajon. Aerial views and cell phone video from that neighbor show just how intense and huge the flames were initially. It's still unclear what started the fire. Then the Lakeside Fire Chief Don Butt says crews now have to do an outside attack as they say it's an issue with structural integrity and they fear that the house could collapse. So firefighters are going to stay outside and put water on the home. No firefighter injuries reported as they still carry 45 pounds of gear in the high heat today. But let's show you a map just before of all the latest. This is number five of multiple fires that broke out today. Earlier, there was a brush fire that took place in Santee, and that was the first one that we saw that took place earlier today, and then it went on to Deer Springs, where we saw a fire broke out in that region, as well as in Gopher Canyon and in Julian. That fire also took place, multiple brush fires across our county, and then also Camp Pendleton. Fire crews reported brush fire up there. Small acreages on all four of those fires that took place throughout the county as the heat and the wind have been contributing factors. And back out here live, you see the smoke is still up as it continues to, to smolder right from the roof and continues to come forth. Firefighters say they're going to continue to stay outside as they're unclear about the structural integrity of the home. We're expected to have an update from the Lakeside Fire Chief coming soon. We'll have that for you in the next edition of News 8 coming up at 630. I'll send it back to you, Steve and Barbara Lee. All right, Heather, thank you. This weather creating all kinds of dangers. What everyone wants to know now is when will we get some relief from this heat? Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis is here now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. And this is what we were concerned about, Carlene, the heat and the wind. Exactly, Stephen. So now we're talking about those winds that are going to be shifting more so with an onshore flow, which will bring some relief, but that won't be until we hit about tomorrow into the weekend. But we're still dealing with the heat and a heat advisory that's in play until 7 p.m. tonight. Taking a look at our temperatures for the highs today, we had little bit cooler at the coast, not as many 90s, but still pretty warm out there with those 80s and seeing those 90s intact for the inland valleys. We also hit a record for Chula Vista as well as for El Cajon. By tomorrow, we're seeing a lot more of the 80s popping up, but still warmer than usual. Also some 80s towards the coast as well as some upper 70s. But as I mentioned, still warmer than usual temperatures, so we have to be careful. Unfortunately, the camera did go out over the harbor, but here are the details. We're talking about fewer 90s in the forecast today, still warmer. And then as we go into the next few days, it's going to be on the cooler side. So that is some much needed relief. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete microclimate forecast coming up. Back to you, Barbara Lee and Steve. All right, thanks, Carlene. For the first time, we are hearing from a grandmother who was shot in the forehead during protests in La Mesa. Injuries from a beanbag round put Leslie Furcron in the ICU for several days. As News Ace David Gofferson reports, the family's attorney is calling on the La Mesa Police Department to release the name of the officer. I'm a mother and my grandmother. I'm a, my grandchildren call me g -ma. Leslie Furcron, the 59-year-old grandmother shot with a beanbag round by a La Mesa police officer, 
during protests on May 30th is out of the hospital and talking. I'm a productive member of society. I go to San Diego City College. I was, that's changed. Working on a bachelor's degree as a social service worker. I'm also a woman in recovery, productive member of society. I'm a law abiding citizen. Furkron was streaming the protest live on Facebook when the beanbag hit her in the head. She ended up in the ICU for days. Her attorney, Dante Pride, says she still can't see out of her left eye. There is nothing she could have done. There is nothing on camera anywhere that will show that she made an officer of La Mesa Police Department either fear for their life or injured them. In a city council meeting Tuesday, La Mesa Police Chief Walt Vasquez was asked to release the name of the officer. He said the investigation is still ongoing and releasing the name could put the officer in danger. We have had credible threats. So uh, at this time, since we're early in the investigation, we won't be releasing the name until the completion. La Mesa Police released a timeline saying the officer shot from 40 yards away after Furkron was observed throwing an object at deputies. That object was a soda can. She's a 59-year-old woman. There's no way she had strength or power enough to throw a can from where she was hit all the way to where the officers were. The grandmother only spoke briefly and used a walker to exit the media briefing. I also have a job as an IHS care provider, but now I'm gonna be a person that has to have the help of being cared for. David Godfordson, News 8. La Mesa Police Chief Walt Vasquez released a statement saying the incident will be fully investigated, including an in-depth look at crowd control practices. The family attorney is also calling for an independent investigation. A horrific scene today in Ramona. A crash killed two people. A third person trapped inside the vehicle was freed but remains hospitalized with serious injuries. Happened around 1230 this afternoon on Mussy Grade Road at Artie's Way. So far, no word yet on what caused the crash. A high-speed chase ends with a splash in Le Lemon Grove. Check this out. A driver being pursued by sheriff's deputies lost control and then crashed into a family's pool in their backyard. Happened around 4 this, after this morning at a home on Camino de las Palmas. Although the car was pretty much submerged, it was still on. You can even see that the windshield wipers were working. The driver managed to get away. No injuries reported. There are a little more than 100 newly confirmed cases of COVID-19 in San Diego County. Local health officials say 108 people tested positive out of more than 3,800 tests. That's a positive rate of 2.8 percent. It is just under the 14-day rolling average of about 3 percent. The total number of cases is now at 8,837. The total number of deaths increased by 4 to 305. County leaders are steadily moving to reopen more businesses in the meantime. They say it's happening so fast that they've added indoor movie theaters to the list of businesses that can reopen this Friday. Theaters would have to limit the number of attendees, among other precautions. They must also ensure employees and customers practice good hygiene by using facial coverings when not eating or drinking, that they practice good uh, hand hygiene, and that they maintain physical distancing and screened their screen for symptoms as they come in. Gyms, bars and wineries, bowling alleys and community pools are also allowed to reopen, but that doesn't mean that all of them will. People should call ahead of time to double check if a certain business is in fact open. Over the weekend, we saw a slight increase in the percentage of positive cases. It comes nearly two weeks after many businesses were allowed to reopen. News 8's Brandon Lewis looks at whether there's a connection and where cases are increasing faster in this Beyond the Numbers report. Uh, Stephen Barberly, the number of coronavirus cases is continuing to increase, but that's no surprise given that our testing capacity is also increasing and coronavirus is still prevalent in our community. So we go beyond the numbers to help explain some trends that are occurring and why that's the case. There are now nearly 9,000 confirmed coronavirus cases in San Diego County. 
The actual number is still likely higher because not everyone is tested, but our testing capacity is increasing every week the pandemic continues. Monday to Monday, Encinitas saw cases jump more than any other city, up more than 33 percent. It's notable because it was the first city to have a reopened protest. Organizers then pointed out Encinitas went almost a month without adding any cases in April. The largest number of cases continues to come out of South Bay communities. Leaders correctly point out it doesn't actually show where residents are getting infected. Many are frontline workers, including some who work in restaurants that now allow dine-in eating or businesses with in-store shopping. Hospital officials stress they're monitoring the percentage of positive cases relative to the number of tests performed as an indicator of progress. That number spiked above 4% this weekend for the first time in about a month. That coincides with the biggest reopenings, but the county says tracers found more cases are actually originating at gatherings in people's homes, not businesses. We are advising against it because when you have uh, individuals outside of your households come together, there is the increased risk for uh, spreading um, uh, COVID-19. Health officials continue monitoring the number of available hospital beds and ICU capacity to handle any potential surge and say cases will still rise. Scripps Health stopped accepting patients from other counties to ensure there's enough space for San Diegans and avoid triggering a change in the health order. We cannot uh, rest on our laurels and we have to be constantly on top of uh, what's going on with uh, the number of cases, hospitalizations, uh, outbreaks uh, as well. The full effects of the continued reopening and ongoing protest takes about two to three weeks to show up in the data. That's because the incubation period for coronavirus is up to 14 days and it takes time for some of those test results to get returned into the county. Every time something changes, it essentially resets the clock, which is why it requires us to continually watch the numbers. Stephen Barberling. All right, thanks, Brandon. Well, here's some news that a lot of families have been looking forward to. The San Diego Zoo is ready to reopen. Both the zoo and Safari Park will officially reopen on June 20th after the longest closure in the zoo's 103 year history. Due to COVID, face coverings will be required for visitors two years and older, and the parks will be operating at half capacity. We are going to have, as you can imagine, six foot markers along the pathways. We'll have one way directional signage for certain areas. We'll have some of the habitats that are pulled back a little bit away from the, the species to protect the species as well as our visitors. And before the official reopening, the parks will host preview days for members and donors.